What's up guys, my name's Luke and welcome back to Motion and Design. So I thought I'd do another tutorial, seeing as though the last tutorial that I did, there was nothing for the Patreons and so I wanted to put something out there that at least the Patreons can get something out of it. So I was messing around with X particles and I was trying to figure out a different way of using it and I realized that you could use vertex maps with X particles. I don't know if I'm behind the curve with this, but I've never really seen anyone use a vertex map with X particles. And so yeah, I thought it was pretty cool that you could. So I wanted to do like a disintegration effect, but I wanted to figure out a more like advanced way of doing a disintegration effect. So uh, yeah, let me show you what I did. So if you want to follow along exactly, uh, you can use this uh, female bus statue. If you just uh, go to bridge, type in statue, it should be one of the first ones that pop up. And that's the thing that we're going to be using up here. Uh, when you export, make sure that you're using the, the renderer of choice because that means that the, the texture that comes in will be the correct texture over here. Cool. Let's go over here. Let's just make this a little bit bigger. Let's maybe make it like 777. Seven, seven. That should be perfect for what we're trying to do. Let's go over here into X particles, add an XP system. Uh, if you don't, you obviously don't have it up over here, but just go to XP and then XP system over here. Cool. In our meter, let's change it from a rectangle to objects, and then let's throw this in here. And now if we press play, we should get particles shooting out everywhere. Cool. Let's go into the emission, change it from rate to shot, and turn the speed all the way down. So now if we press play, we have a bunch of particles on it. Cool. Let's increase this by a bit. Let's set it to like 100,000 for now. That's cool. Okay, so you'll notice that uh, the way that it's being distributed is incorrect. So if we go over here, we can change it from polygon center and we can change it to polygon area over here. Cool. So there are two different ways you can go about doing this and it all depends on the object that you're using. So if you're using an object and it doesn't really matter what the texture of the object is, you can just use what I just showed you here and select polygon area and it will fill it up. But that won't work if we're wanting to maintain the texture. So you'll see with the render that I did, I kind of use the exact same texture over here as the particles. So to get that effect, what we're gonna do is instead of going polygon area, we're gonna to go to um, texture over here. And then in the texture, we're gonna drag in the texture. If we drag, if we drag this texture over here into our material, and we press play, you'll notice that no particles are coming out. Uh, the reason for that is because we're using an octane texture. So what we can do is we can go over here, change it to standard, and let's just re-export this again. Cool, we got our uh, other material over here. We can delete the geometry. All we're gonna need is this material. So we just need a basic default Cinema 4D material. Let's go into our meter over here, go to texture, and then replace the material with this material. And now when we press play, it fills it up. And in the render, we'll be able to keep all that detail in there. Awesome. So let's turn off our XP system for now. Uh, we'll work with that a little bit just now. So now let's go over here and add a vertex map onto our object over here. Cool, we're gonna make sure that use fields is checked on and we have a freeze, that is perfect. If you don't have a freeze, just go over here and add a freeze. Let's turn the freeze off for now, you'll see why in a sec. And let's add a shader field. In the shader field, in the shading, let's go to noise and let's change the noise to something that looks good. Uh, let's see what's a nice looking. Uh, that one should work fine for now. Cool. So let's change this up a bit so that we get some harsh red and harsh yellow so that there's 100% uh, where it's fully yellow and then zero where it's red. Cool. Let's also make this just a little bit bigger, like 20% should be fine. So at the moment, if we had to run the simulation and have it uh, and, and use our vertex map over here, all the parts that are red won't move, but everything that is yellow will move. Cool. So that's cool and all if you just want it like this, but I wanted a growing effect. So over here in our freeze, uh, one thing that's really important when you're using this stuff is to check the blending modes. So make sure that the shader field over here is set to max so that it adds on top. In the freeze over here, let's go to grow and let's set a radius. Let's see what happens first. Uh, 
Um, something like that should be fine. Cool. Let's turn off that shader field for now and let's add in a spherical field. Let's make the size of this quite small and I'm going to set it to the top of the object over here. Uh, let's make sure that now when we press play, it starts over there and goes down gradually. Cool, but it's a little bit fast. If we make it back to 10. And let's maybe set this to 5 over here. So it's a little bit slower. If I change this to 1. Cool, that works over here. And now over here, we're going to change the blending mode of our shader field to overlay, I think. Yeah. So now you see it goes down like that. I think it's still too fast. Uh, we can, so a lot of this is just like trial and error. Uh, I don't uh, figure out the things beforehand because it, I, I do realize that if you're using a different object, there's a whole bunch of trial and error involved. Cool, so this is the effect that we're wanting over here. Awesome, now that that's done, now we can go back into our XP system over here. Cool, so we're gonna need a XP wind modifier over here. And I want it to blow off to the right, so let's move it so that it's facing the right direction. And if we had to press play now, it's just gonna push it off to the side. And that is not cool at all. But what we can do is in our wind over here, under fields, we can drag in our vertex map. And so now if we had to press play, Look at that, super cool. cool. We can turn that off for now, let's see. Starts from the top and starts slowly moving down. Cool, so you'll notice that there are parts that are sticking here because of the fact that in our vertex map over here, there are parts that are 100% and there are parts that are 0%. Uh, cool. Uh, let's also add a turbulence over here. Let's go over here into turbulence and let's set the scale to maybe like something like around there. Let's see what that looks like. Cool. And exact same thing what we can do over here is in the field. Let's drag in our vertex map. Cool. So now it's only the particles that are moving that are actually getting affected by it. Uh, let's also set the strength of this down a bit, maybe to about 75, so that's half the amount over there. And our turbulence, let's make it also maybe 30. So that the scale of the turbulence is a little bit more dramatic over there. Cool, so in my render, what I did is I wanted only the one half to be moving. So how I did that was I added a linear field to add a linear field over here. Let's make this way smaller. So I mean you can kind of see what's gonna happen over here. Now it's only gonna be stuff that's on the left hand, I mean on the right hand side that will move. Let's move it like that and let's also change this to maybe screen. Uh, that's the right way of going about it. It is not. Uh, yeah, something like that. So that it's only affecting the ones on the left hand side. But again, this freeze is way too fast. Something like that. Make this even smaller. So it's slower. Point one. It is moving extremely fast, but something like that should be fine. Let's see what that looks like. And that, look at that, that's super cool. Cool, so uh, in the shader field over here, I wanna add some animation to it. So let's set that to maybe about one over here. Uh, the reason I'm wanting to add some animation is just so that there's a little bit of movement and also so that there's not points that are 100% on each side. Uh, if you don't want the movement over here, I would suggest not um, having so much contrast and maybe bringing it down a bit so that every particle is affected or else it will be just like certain blotches of particles that just don't move and that's not really the effect that we want. And let's see if that gives us the effect that we're wanting. Yeah, look at that. Super cool. 
So we don't want it that it's just, you know, half a head over here. That doesn't look very nice. Uh, I just kind of want it in the beginning to be like that. So maybe at around, maybe at around like 50 over here. Let's go to our linear field, set a keyframe over here, and then a keyframe over here, and then just move that off. Nice. So the whole point of doing that is just so that we can focus on our subject over here. And then as it gets to a certain point, then the rest will move off. Uh, I think our wind is still a little bit too strong. Maybe let's set it to 50. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, I think that looks pretty cool. Cool. So for the rendering of this, we're going to add a octane tag. I See, I already did that. Let's go to the particle rendering and change it to geometry. Let's add a sphere and then change that to a radius of about one. Let's go over here into our Octane Live Viewer, add a material, and let's add a material to that sphere. Inside of the material, we're gonna add a instance color and drag that into the diffuse, change it from file to particle, and then drag our emitter over here. So now you will see that, let's press play. Those particles are a little big. <laughs> it's so weird looking. Uh, let's change it to like 0.1. Hmm. Oh, oh yes, because in our geometry we have, we have to drag in our sphere. Awesome. Let's make it a little bit bigger. 0.5 and now you'll see that we're actually retaining the detail from the texture Look at that. That's super cool. Uh, so you'll notice that with the texture. It's a little bit darker But that's an easy fix. Let's go over here add a color correction And let's just bring down the gamma a bit and then raise the exposure And now we're back to the way it originally looked awesome let's See if we have to press play Getting some really nice details over there Okay, so these particles are way too big. Let's change it to 0.1. And to get a really nice result, all we have to do is increase the amount of particles. I think I used about a million. Maybe it was 10 million, I'm not too sure. Because we wanted that it actually fills up our uh, object over here. Awesome. So. That's pretty much the gist of it. To get the, the lighting and the way it looked, I'll show you how I did that. So I'm just gonna turn this off for now. That's the general effect uh, done over there. Let me go into my project file over here. This is already all cached. Um, another thing that I did with the cache. Uh, so in your cache over here, just build cache, go into the playback. I sent it to custom and I had this type of like ramp over here so that it goes really fast at first, slows down and then speeds up again. For the lighting of this scene, I literally only have one light that's coming over here. I have one light that's off in this direction. And so my usual thing, what I do is if it's a complex scene, basic lighting. If it's a simple scene, then complex lighting. So to get this lighting that I did over here, or at least it's full of like gobos and reflections, Sorry, gobos and like shadows. Um, I added this. Let me show you over here. I have a cloner over here with a with a cube that's just stretched out on the Z direction. And I have a plane over here with a shadow of a tree. So I mean, all I'm doing with that is I have this tree over here and that's just plugged into the opacity. So it looks really ratchet from out here. But then inside over here, we're creating this really nice um, shadow off to the left here with the white over here. This just draws the eye in over here and I thought it looked really nice. It like had this really nice dynamic look to it. So yeah, that is the tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I hope you learned something new. I only figured this out and I can see so many possibilities with it. So yeah, I hope you guys learned something and I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you want, uh, this project file will be up on my Patreon. If you don't, um, 
want that a like and a subscribe goes a long way and yeah i just want to say thanks for the year of support that you guys have given me uh, i've been on youtube for i think a well i started making tutorials about a year ago and yeah i just wanted to say thanks for the support we're uh, over 4,000 uh, subscribers now on YouTube and I think I have about 20 patrons so yeah I really appreciate all of you guys uh, it's a lot of support so a lot of the time with my patreon um, I don't want to put tutorials up on the patreon because I prefer to put it up on YouTube so that you know the broader audience can see it you know we want to share the knowledge around and then if you guys really want the project files or if you just want to support the channel then you can support me on patreon but yeah Thanks for all the support and yeah, I'll see you guys next week. Peace.